this week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Is your trash collector spying on you? We've got that story, plus still looking for some 9-11 truth. But first, less than 24 hours after formally certifying Iran's compliance with the P5 plus one nuclear deal, the Trump administration announced a new round of sanctions against Iran nominally for having a ballistic missile program. This bizarre disconnect between reality and policy was prefaced in the statement confirming compliance, during which administration officials vowed Iran won't go unpunished for nonspecific allegations that they are violating the spirit of the deal. The Iranian foreign minister said that the U.S. has been in repeated violation of the P5 plus one deal in preventing companies from doing business with Iran. They've repeatedly had to take the U.S. to Joint Commission to deal with and seek redress. They also warned that major U.S. violations could ultimately force Iran to withdraw from the deal, which possibly is the whole likely goal of the Trump administration's moves here in the first place. And we grab this article from antiwar.com and we grab it from Jason Ditz as these things are moving pretty quickly. So, James, where does this leave the Iran nuclear deal? Uh, It leaves it exactly where the neocons and their ilk have been trying to steer it for years and years. Uh, Just type Bolton Iran deal into a search engine and you'll find years worth of stories of him saying, you must not go through with this deal. Okay, you've gone through this deal with this deal. You must renege it. You must... You must scrap it now, and the bloodthirsty warmongering neocons have been railing against this for a very long time, and their strategy has always been, well, okay, let's let's put some sort of deal in front of them and then either make them go into non-compliance or allege that they've been in non-compliance. So that's where this is heading ultimately, and uh, as I understand it, these are 90-day recertifications. These recertifications of compliance have to be done every 90 days, so 90 days from now, or 180 days from now, or 270 days from now, at some point down the line, they are not going to recertify. And we know this because, also reported on antiwar.com, is the fact that uh, it was... uh, So Tillerson had to make his speech to Congress, um, giving certification, recertifying the the deal on Monday. Uh, Before that point, Trump called it off and said, no, what are our options here? I don't want to recertify this deal. Even though there is not one single thing that they have done in non-compliance with this deal, I don't want to recertify. Uh, and uh, there's a big article about it on antiwar.com you can read through. And basically Tillerson and McMaster had to plead and cajole and say, no, this is not in the national security interests of the United States to renege on a deal in which the other side is in 100% compliance and had to do some arm twisting. So the delusional Trump voters who still believe that this is the Prince of Peace president who somehow is going to stop the U.S. from getting involved in wars, even though he fell hook, line, and sinker for the false flag chemical attack in Syria and dropped bombs because he saw he saw dead children, so it must have been Assad, so let's drop bombs, and is absolutely foaming at the mouth to scrap this Iran deal in one form or another, despite the fact that Iran is in 100% compliance, shows that there is going to be more military involvement of the United States in a number of different theaters in the Middle East, despite whatever the lying psychopaths on the campaign trail promised the voters. And 